welcome back to another episode of my w romance again i want to thank everybody who continues to watch and support this podcast i hope it encourages you and as much as it encourages us and i would like to introduce val raven is there anything more that you'd like to say about yourself um, my name is Val Raven. Um, I've been playing roller derby since 2016. Um, I actually didn't know how to skate before playing roller derby. So that's always the crazy story. Um, besides that, roller derby has really changed my life. It's changed who I am as a person. It's given me more confidence. It's given me an outlet. It's actually let me meet my boyfriend. And um, derby has been just amazing to me. And I'm so excited to start back up again. <laughs> excuse me sorry that's awesome I love that story I love when I hear that people um didn't know how to skate before they came to derby that's so beautiful I mean it's already something that um is hard to like step into Mm -hmm. you know and you already know how to skate I can imagine the the not knowing how to skate and trying to break into that like wow well everyone always asks they're like why would you want to do that that's crazy that's where people punch each other and you know all the typical derby stuff and they're like do you even know how to skate I'm like not a clue and they're like oh you're gonna die and I'm like (laughs) oh and here you are (laughs) alive and well still doing it (laughs) right when did you fall head over skates for roller derby um, so I saw my first, my, actually my ex-sister-in-law used to play and I saw her play once and I was like, oh my God, you're crazy. And then I went to the game and I was like, oh, I love this so much. I love the skating. I love the athleticism. I love the girl power. I love like everything that this is. So I started putting on skates in like October of 2015 and I started my fresh meet in January of 2016 graduated later that year and then I've just been in love ever since and how did your first roller derby date go whether it be your first practice or your first bout well I remember I cried a lot my first practice because I was a smoker and like didn't have the like the endurance and like you would skate around for like five minutes and be like oh my god I'm dying how do people do this and like sit down and just like catch my breath so like my first practice, my first couple practices were really rough. And then like you, cause I was never like an athlete, athlete, athlete before. Um, I always did music and stuff. So this was like totally out of my wheelhouse, but, um, my first practice was really rough. My first game, I remember I was, um, just like your emotions are on like 10 and everything's crazy and the people there. And it was, um, insane. I will never wear a skirt to a game again (laughs) but yeah yes the infamous first tutu on a game (laughs) yeah Yeah, it was like a a really thin like sport skirt and I'm like oh my god like this was a really bad idea and I didn't think this through especially because you know that first game you're on the floor like 75 percent of the time anyways I'm like ooh, I didn't think about this (laughs) yes skating comfortably is like you learn that later, like, yeah, I don't care how cool I look. I just want to be comfortable. <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like swimming, you know, you're always like pulling your shorts of, out, out of your butt. hundred <laughs> percent. No, you're right. Yeah. Or like pulling your jersey down or like, you know, pulling your friend's jersey down so that they can see their numbers or yeah. Yes. Your alter ego. How did you find it? Um, so actually Val Raven, I found it from Cedar Point. Um, it's a, uh, amusement park in Ohio and it was one of the new rides at the time. And I was like, Hmm, this looks awesome. Like waiting in line and seeing all like the theme and decor. And I'm like, this is amazing. So I went home and I was like, what is Val Raven? Like, where did they pull this from? So it's, I don't remember it's from some mythology and there's like two different stories. So like one of them, the Val Raven, eats the heart of a king on the battlefield and becomes like a mortal human. And then the other one is they eat the hearts of children 
as yeah, like a weird yeah thing. So um, ironically, I'm a teacher. So that's why I was like, we're going to go with that. <laughs> wow. That's so dope. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. glad well, that we got to hear that story. <laughs> my number is also pi. So three, one, four, because I'm a math teacher, but yeah, the Val Raven thing is, I was like, that's so like metal. I'm like, I love it. So. Yeah. That's super hardcore. Yeah. Like, I would, if I knew what that was, be like before bounding with you I'd be super scared you know <laughs> <laughs> intimidation goes very far in derby yeah it <laughs> does well like I could be like the friendliest person off the track and I'm like oh my god buddy buddy whatever after party we're great friends and during the bout like I'm like I'm gonna kill you like <laughs> there's no in between like I'm super aggressive and the minute the game ends I'm like oh <laughs> let's get ice cream <laughs> yeah. Like, da, da, da. But, yeah I had a, a skater um that I mean she looked really fierce and she was on my team um I, I had I was captain so I had actually drafted her so I had never played against her and me and my derby wife which was on another team because we would play home home games um told like I would tell her like how fierce like this one skater was and she was like dude she growled at me <laughs> holy cow that's and I was like what and she's like yeah that chick could growl and she said like that bitch growls and I was like wow dude like that's beautiful like I was so proud of her like I was like yes she's on my team so actually during um I think it was the 2019 season when we had like awards at the end I got most feared Ooh. and uh, I have my trophy I could go grab it it's really awesome absolutely all right like, yeah, like I said we're in the process of moving so everything is like it was funny this was like the first thing that we packed up was all of our derby stuff so nice. <laughs> so your uh boyfriend Yes. Is in roller derby also. Yes. Awesome. There we go. Yeah, it's like our box of trophies. <laughs> nice. Yeah. There it is. Wow. <laughs> That is so cool. Yeah. I love it. Uh, Most oh, it's backwards, but yeah. 2019. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, sorry. No, I love it. That is so I'm so cool. proud of that trophy. <laughs> yeah, I would be too. <laughs> I would like hang it around my neck and wear it everywhere. <laughs> so, so we found out how you came up with your alter ego have you ever felt that you lost Fel Raven? And if so, how did you find her again? Um, I don't think I've ever lost myself. Um, I've just always wanted like more. So my league is a very small league. We're WIFTA sanctioned, but I think we're like 280 something. Like we're pretty low. Um, so I've always wanted to, I've always aspired to get higher and higher and higher. And Windy City is just too far away for me and their practice schedule is kind of crazy and it's in the city and all this stuff. So I've always just wanted more. So like I ended up joining um, the Chicago Brews Brothers. Um, so I'm part of a men's league. Um, my boyfriend actually started a USARS league just recently. So I'm part of that. Um, I'm a part of the Chicago Knockouts, um, which is kind of like a rogi. They have their own rule set thing. Um, I'm a part of Midwest All-Stars. I did USARS National Tournament, uh, the Nationals this past year, and I played for um, North Central. Um, I'm just very competitive and want to get better. So I think I've grown like that um, because I've gotten a place with some amazing people. But um, yeah, I don't think I've ever really lost myself it's just grown more and more perfect what were you looking for in roller derby 
Um, I was looking for friendship, I think, really. Um, I was kind of by myself a lot and it was me and my husband and he kind of encouraged me to go try this thing. Hey, maybe you can make some girlfriends and it grew into so much more. <laughs> so yeah. for sure. And how does Derby make you feel? It's the best thing ever. I feel like this past year, year and a half, really, without anything, like, I feel like I've lost the part of myself because Derby was such a big thing. We'd have three or four practices a week. You'd have games, you'd have travel, you'd have all of this stuff. And it just kind of, bloop, it was gone. So, like, I felt like I lost the part of myself during COVID because I just missed it so much. So it's nice that things are on the upswing a little bit, but it's been crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like forward, backward, you know, uh, open. Are we opening up? No, no, we're closing back up. It's just like this whole like up and down of emotion as well. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that you guys probably heard that you guys were coming back I and mean, all of a sudden, nope, wave two is coming. And, you know, it's like, it's his back and forth of, I just want to play, please. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, playing with our emotions for a, li- a little bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. No, luckily right now I'm on a leave of absence because I'm. Oh a little bombarded um with just other things so I'm not like emotionally there right now so that's kind of been helping me that right now things are kind of like Mm -hmm. shifting so much that I'm not like on that platform at the moment like I'm doing this and I'm doing other things um so I won't be back until December (laughs) and we'll see where we're at probably when things are going to be going again now so yeah Yeah. I'm kind of glad that I'm not in the middle of this right now Um, yes I was on the board and I'm so happy I'm not on the board anymore (laughs) I'm like oh thank god I don't have to make this decision (laughs) yeah I'm I'm sponsorship so I'm on the board but I'm kind of like my What I do is like in the beginning of the season and then I get it all done. And then by then I'm just like, I just have to vote on stuff, you know, at that point, you know, like, yeah, you know, my work here is done, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's tough. So have you and roller derby ever broken up? Um. No, we have not. Um, I've just been like 100% let's go just adding more things on. COVID was like the first break that I've actually ever had from Derby. Like, even though I've injured myself in the past, I'm like, nope, we're going to push through it. I don't want to stop this. I don't ever want to not do this because this thing is just that amazing and makes you feel that good that you don't ever want to just, you don't want to stop. So you push through it. So that's the other thing that's been kind of nice about COVID is everybody's kind of healing finally. <laughs> Cause I know I'm not the only one, the only crazy person like that, but. No, you're not. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's a lot of <clears throat> things. And th- that would be my next question. How like, because it's such a growing obsession and it feels so good. Like, I don't, I don't think people realize how Derby is like crack you know what I mean like you oh, get yeah. a piece of it and you just want to do it and and it can be for a lot for a lot of years it was very out of balance for me it's yeah. what I really needed it was where I found my uh where I got my strength back you know where I, I I took my power back in certain areas of my life because I could do it on the track it was very symbolic for me getting through the pack um I felt respected there. I felt loved there. I felt, felt accepted. And, um, so, so many things didn't matter to me anymore. You know what I mean? Like, Mm. has, has it ever come, become out of balance for you? And if so, how did you, how did you make it work how did you get back in balance and prioritize the way you needed to that's a good question um 
You're all I have in Derby. <laughs> Well, like <laughs> it, it took me years. I'm like, no, Derby is life, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and that's still kind of what it is because before, so I actually um, got a divorce. Almost, I'm in the process of getting a divorce from my husband, and um, my current boyfriend plays roller derby, and he is just as into it as I am. So, like together, we've come together and really just done all of the derby things. So it's, I don't know, it's brought us closer together um, having a partner who also loves all the things that you love. And then, um, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's, and that's a beautiful answer. <clears throat> Cause it's not like, um, because everybody's different. So like, instead of having to put it, like having to compromise Derby for something, you found somebody who had that priority aligned with your priority and you guys are going full, you know, you know, fully moving forward with that. And that's beautiful too. It's like, okay, well then you find like-minded people and you exactly. love, right. I love that. That's good. There's, so <laughs> There's many. no wrong answer. You know, like there isn't, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, it just depends. There's so many souls that do Derby that need to hear different things and a lot of people are like okay well how did you balance it oh well I ha- I took a LOA or I was able to find another league who had different practice times or yep. I found somebody who was just as gung-ho as I was and we do mm-hmm. the shit out of derby and we do it yeah. together you know like they're all beautiful answers you know and I appreciate yours it's, it's lovely and that's how you make the relationship work right yeah well I mean my my ex is kind of like hey you know you're practicing too and at the time I was only on one league and he's like two nights a week that's too much and now I'm like haha that's hilarious because we're like four times a week and games and travel and everything else and yeah it's just it's weird how my life kind of changed finding somebody else who is into it as well yeah yeah and and, I mean I mean God, six times out of 10, you have the skater who says, I have to hear a lot of shit about how often I go, how often, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, you can watch these interviews and there's like, you know, less than, you know, 10% that will say like what you're saying, you know, unless you find somebody or like, yeah, no, I do. I, I have to have make sure everything's done before I go to practice to make it okay for me to go. And those are the sacrifices we make because that's what we love so much, you know. And yeah. it's where when people are like all like, oh cool, you have another derby event. And it's so like alluring for people like, you're a derby girl. Wow, you know, like yeah. and then they're like they see how much time you put into it and it's kind of like well it's I didn't so much- think that you were going to be doing that but you know like yeah it takes a lot to run this business that it is this family that it is you know it's like I don't just go to practice I'm also on the board or I'm also on this committee or I'm also you I'm know doing skate park I- stuff to improve my balance or I'm doing yeah. other skate stuff and yeah they want to go out there and support you with the sign but it's like if I don't practice boo boo you're not going to want to support me with that sign because I'm going to be all over the floor you know? exactly. yeah yeah and like, yeah and that's not fun for anybody exactly yeah yeah I mean you're part of it it's a cult so it, no, <laughs> I'm in Derby <laughs> it really yeah yeah I, I know <laughs> I'm part of it too. <laughs> It's and it's really hard to leave, you know. It's really hard to like not not be in Derby, um, and to say like I'm not gonna do this anymore or whatever. Like even being on a leave of absence, even though at the same time, like you said, just taking the break, you're like, wow, I can actually do this with my time now, or you yeah. know, I can heal. Like seeing and- things, but then like the minute I know the minute that we start practicing again I'm gonna be there like oh look I found this other hobby that I really enjoy and oh this is awesome but the minute derby's offered I'm gonna go right back to that You're like fuck this hobby <laughs> no, it's it's fine crack. it's crack you love it so much and it destroyed like you've heard the phrase we destroy our bodies to save our souls and that is just so true it's so true so 
Okay. So I've been talking on other podcasts because I kind of don't want to destroy my body anymore. So I'm thinking of like retiring. <laughs> so that's funny because I totally support Derby. I think I'm at a point where like, I know people who state that are older than me. I'm 43. I've been doing it since I was 30. And I'm, it I was a place that. where I could take my power back and I really needed mm -hmm. that. And now I don't, I'm not in situations where I need that anymore. Like where I've put myself, where I've been disrespected or I'm not being appreciated or anything like that. Like I've kind of found, I've healed. Yes. Derby has helped me heal uh, to the point where it's like, I need to stop taking medicine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't feel like if they say, take this, you know, and then when you get better discard and you keep taking it, it's going to potentially make you sick, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, that's how I was starting to feel at practice. That's how I was starting to feel on the track where I was holding space for people who needed it. And I was just getting hit at that point. I know more, I know, I no longer had that fight in me. Mm -hmm. I had nothing to fight for anymore. Mm -hmm. At that point, I was, so, I, I've gotten to the point where I am peaceful. I am peaceful. <laughs> and I, I don't, I don't, and, and that's okay. And it was different for me. Absolutely. Because I've been doing it for a whole decade. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I was like, what's happening? And like, the only reason that I knew that I was ready was because seeing pictures with me not in them was okay oh. you know what I mean like seeing what the the league was doing and me not I mean almost like seeing your ex with another woman yeah and you're okay with it because you're over it that's when you know I'm done <laughs> I'm happy wow. for them like I'm you know what I mean like that's when you're like I'm happy for that person or I'm happy for the league and I'm okay not being part of that and that's the only reason that I know now that I'm okay with it that I've actually like I'm working doing other things like this like I want to mm -hmm. do the documentary I want to support Derby but like I cannot physically put myself out there anymore I can't hold that space and energy anymore for other people and what the way that I would like give it and I would take it you know I would give hits and I would take them I can't do that anymore like but that's okay you know I just I I, I have there's nothing wrong with it. I just, mm -hmm. I, I just, that season is over for me. My season is over. Finally. That's, you know? so That's so powerful though. I never thought about that with, uh, I saw my picture. I saw my league without myself in it and I was okay with that. That's really powerful. Yeah. That's really powerful. <laughs> so if that ever happens to you, like maybe these words will help you. Yeah. 15 years down the line, whenever you're ready, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, you, you can, and hopefully me going through this while I talk to people who are still very much on fire for Derby will help skaters who are like in that transition or like, who am I when mm -hmm. I'm not in Derby anymore, you know? And so he, like, so lost. I know so many people who would be like completely lost. Like you don't know who you are because it takes up so much of your time and so much of your energy that if you just take it out, you, you lost your identity. Yeah. I felt like that when I stopped drinking, I had started drinking when yeah. I was 13 and I stopped drinking like in my late thirties, you know, and I was afraid to not stop, you know, like who will I be without alcohol? Like when yeah. I go play, like who will I be? And, 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 and finding who you are. And it was, so I've done, I did an interview just recently with the um, lovely soul KT. Her, she goes by doppelganger. And um, she said something so powerful. And she said, um, I'm powerful and I do roller derby. So for a long time, we thought we were powerful because we were in roller derby. No, yeah. we're powerful and we do roller derby. And it was so like, you know, and, and yeah. because for so long, I thought that the reason I was cool, the reason I was strong, the reason I was worthy was because I was a derby girl and I was in roller derby. And I, I was all those things even without it. And a lot of people I think are, might realize that during 
this time that we're not skating because a lot yeah. of us felt lost a lot I mean that's why I did the podcast I wanted to give people a platform where they could still connect with other skaters you know and and I feel that energy like why do you do roller derby what did you find in roller derby and hear these answers and be like yes yes and when it comes back I'm going to be ready and when it came back I thought I was ready and then we start scrimmaging and I was like no I don't want to no yeah <laughs> but the, but I love hearing and I, I I completely understand I mean I remember having to stop because I was pregnant and asking the doctor when I can skate again and just being mm-hmm. on fire right like you know like when you know when can I be on skates when can I bow again and and this, the minute I could do it, I was there, you know, Yeah. and for so many years, so many times that I had to take a break, um, and just, and, and rest and not be on skates and, you know, whatever, and just be itching to come back. And I did it every time. And then this time I was just like, try to get, get it started, try to get it started. And it's just like, it's just not fighting. yeah. Yeah. So this is my contribution because I, it, it, it served its purpose for me and I'm I'm grateful for everything about roller derby and mm-hmm. it's beautiful medicine in my life it's got me to this point you know mm-hmm. so on that note how does derby make you feel um derby well now I feel terrible because I'm gonna be like derby makes me feel strong like it makes me feel independent no. it makes me feel all of these things that without it, I don't know if I would feel like that. Like as a person, I don't know if I would really feel like that because I feel like the minute I put on my skates and the minute I put on my pads and my helmet and I just feel like a different person, like my self-confidence and my whole demeanor of me as a person just changes. And it's not, it's not just at games, it's at practices, it's at everything. Like you put on that stuff and it just changes how you feel about everything. So yeah. it's so powerful. And I don't know if me as a person, if I'm at that level yet to not have that stuff and still feel that same way about myself, because there are so many, unfortunately, so many broken people in Derby because that's just the way it, it happens. But well, it's the one moment. Ugh. It's the, it's the war paint. It's yes, the, it's the war paint and, and there's nothing wrong with being where you're at. Like, um, you know, when you're trying to manifest something, you have to like already imagine that you already have it mm-hmm. and going through the motions, putting on the skates, putting on your, your, your gear, putting it's your war paint. It's, it's to help you. It's to keep bringing out your alter ego until that you become that person you know what I mean without having to do uh the makeup or the the war paint or the skates but it's perfectly fine to put on your armor and be that person you know what I mean like it it's perfectly fine um it's definitely like I've definitely changed like I was kind of outgoing but I was usually pretty meek but now I am more outgoing and things like that so I mean there are things that I have take, definitely taken from that that alter ego that persona that's kind of transferred over but it's not everything that I want it to be yet and I think that's why I'm not I'm not there yet I'm not done because I have so much more that I know I can grow and I know I can get from being this other person yeah because she's you yeah she's which is, you and she was, she was so dormant and, and now, you know, you're, she's growing. Yeah. She's growing. And eventually you guys will become one. But in the meantime, it's like our inner child, our inner warrior, our inner, you know what I mean? It's your, um, oh God, what's the word? But like, she, she is, she's, she's growing in you you're 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 discovering her and it doesn't there's no time limit on that it could be for the rest of your life it would you know just like getting to know your inner child and heal your past and do all these things the warrior that's always been in you has come alive and she's thriving 
and don't ever stop that. You know what I mean? It's gonna make me cry. It, like I'm oh, over here like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> it is. It's like, true. And, and, and you're coming alive and, yeah. and, and the wild woman um, is always told to be quiet, is always told to be meek, is always told, you know, so it's, it's um, something that you are so ra- ravenous for. I want to say ravenous yeah. for, because like, that's a part of you that's been itching to come out and you have found a healthy outlet for it. So never like apologize for that. It's making you feel powerful because you're, this is your medicine right now. This is, yeah. your, this is your growth period right now. And, and it's beautiful to watch and I'm glad you're on fire with it, you know, and, and, and it's a part of you and it's going to get you so much further than just yeah. therapy. I can see it. Well, that's the crazy thing is I, so my boyfriend was on team USA for USARS And I didn't think, I thought roller derby was just going to be some little, little girl from Northwest Indiana doing this one little weird thing. And lo and behold, a couple of years later, we're in Spain in a country that we don't even speak the language and we're playing, I didn't play, but he was like, just being there to play derby. It was like, I could have never pictured this. Like this is, derby has brought me to these amazing places and things that I would have never experienced if it wasn't for Derby. Completely understand. Yes. Isn't it crazy? Like it'll, it'll find those areas in you that are weak and make them strong. And not only that, it'll open up these doors um, and show you these things that you never thought you'd be doing. Um, And that's the obsession, right? It makes you even feel famous, (laughs) right? Like, yeah. You, I mean, you know, it makes after you, a route, sorry. sorry. Oh, I'll say it just makes you feel so good. Yeah. Like, you know, hey, um, can I get, you know, will you, my daughter loves you. Can I, you know, get, will you sign this for her? And, you know, you're a role model. You're this, you're that. It, you, it makes you like a superhero, you know? And so, of course, people get addicted to that. And it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It is. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful medicine. I I totally love and support roller derby and everybody who, who's experienced it, you know? Mm -hmm. So what has been your worst derby moment? (sighs) (laughs) Well, I have one that pops right to my mind and I'm like, "Mm." (laughs) if we don't like it, we'll cut it out. So, um, I was um, battling depression pretty bad at the time. And um, we had a scrimmage and we used to, um, we would do half the team would play. The other half would like ref or NSO or whatever. And then we'd flip flap and we'd end up playing like all four people, like all four part like sections. And um, I remember I played my game. I got yelled at by my captain. I already wasn't having a good day. So I just sat in the bathroom and just cried the whole time. Not one of my teammates came to check on me. I snuck out of there with nobody saying anything to me. And like, I just felt like total garbage. And um, I wanted to quit. And then I realized, oh, it's just my mental health. It's that's not, it's not the derby. It's something else dealing with me, but that has also helped me get through a lot of like mental health issues, just being able to hit somebody or being able to, you know, like being close to people and being able to take out some of that aggression or some of that fear or being able to work with somebody and being in close contact with people when what you really want to do is just be in a corner by yourself and being like forcing yourself to go out and interact with people. And it's definitely taken a different tool. I can totally relate to that. And I'm sure me knowing that I can relate to that, I'm sure there's many, many skaters out there that can totally like not feeling noticed on a league that makes you feel so accepted at, at, you know, like Derby can make you and break you some days you know yeah. like, there's just days where you're just like you, you're like I thought you guys were my friends <laughs> you know I mean? well so actually after that probably a couple months later I transferred to the Chicago outfit and I was there for like four months and then the drive was like too much 
And I came back to my old league and my league welcomed me with open arms. Most people did. And I've been there ever since, but now I'm also on extra leagues. So I get that other fulfillment that I need, but yeah. That is nice. That, that That's nice to not have. I, and I think that that reminds me of something also that I had read about like being in a relationship, like, even though this is Derby, but I talk about my Derby romance, like, because it's a, it's a relationship that you have with Derby. Right. And it can be toxic and it can be this. And I think that what I have found and in, in what I read in this book, I have found it, but I, I didn't know how to like recognize it is that like, even if you're in a relationship, that one person cannot hold everything for you. Like, yes. You have to have friends that you can talk to. You have to have some, you know, like your, your partner, as much as you want them to be everything for you, cannot be everything it's for you help. too much. Yeah, it's a lot, you know? So like, um, and vice versa, you know, like you can't expect your partner to just get everything from you and just need you, you know, mm. they have to have friends that they can talk to and breakfast with people and, you know, other hobbies, whatever, right? And so with Derby, expecting that I was going to get everything that I needed out of it was too much. And so I started racing. I started meeting people who liked cycling and running and swimming and uh, writing books and farming, everything else that I love to do. Cause I'm the person who has to do everything that I can just possibly imagine. Oh yeah. Like I'm going to take a class for that. Oh yeah. I'm going to do this. Um, like I started to realize that it was okay if I went to practice and nobody was in the mood to say hi to me because yeah. I was going just for me and um you know what I mean not being so freaking needy you know what I mean and well I think that's where that shift came too because I joined derby to make friends and be that kind of person and then my role within myself switched to where I didn't necessarily need that anymore I needed it for a different reason mm-hmm. Yeah, it evolves. You know, there's yeah. other things that you're like, okay, le- yeah, I needed friends too. I needed a community also when I yes. started. Baby. That was the reason why I started. I was very lonely. And and I also needed the exercise. I needed the, you know, I, I needed to move. And then I found that I got my power back and all the other stuff came after, you know what I mean? But my initial mm-hmm. was that I was just like sitting in a dark room with the TV on and I had no yeah. one to talk to. You know, I had a baby. And I felt very lonely, you know, and, and I, I was just, I had seen Chelsea lately and she was with the San Diego Derby girls. And that was the first time I had ever seen Derby. Like, I guess I had seen it. I was watching Chelsea lately. And the very next day, one of the, the IT guys that worked where I worked was my, one of my really good friends, brother. And she was living in, I think Louisiana at the time. But she was coming back to El Paso and she was like, he was like, hey, did you hear that that's coming back? And I was like, no. And she's like, yeah, she's coming back and she's wanting to start a roller derby league here. And I was like, dude, I just saw that on TV yesterday. And I was watching it because I always played sports in high school. And I was thinking to myself, I would love that. Like, it would be super cool if I could do something like that here. Cause I would, I felt like I'd be good at it. You know what I mean? Like I would, I loved the rock and roll, you know, about it. I loved like the aggression and I always loved skating and yeah, I've been doing it since, but it was, I would have never known what it was. It's so kismet, right? Like universe has its plan. Like I wouldn't have known what he was talking about had I not watched Chelsea lately the day before. And I was so lonely that night. Like my baby was asleep. I didn't have any lights on at this tiny little TV I was like in this tiny little bay window in my duplex. It was a quadruplex and I'm just sitting there and I was just, I know it's so sad. And like, now I have like a Derby podcast. And- yeah. Well, I mean, now you have a Derby family. Yeah. Like, oh, like your, your story is there's so many people that have your same story or such a similar story. Very. And it's, it's all of those people that find this one weird niche sport. And then we all kind of come together. Yeah. And because of this podcast, I've met skaters that I would have never talked to ever, you know, who like all, you know, I was shitting bricks wanting to put this on Derby Hell, you know, like Derby Hell is like, 
a little rough sometimes yeah yeah like I was like they're just gonna laugh at me and you know no I I I, I'm so glad I didn't I've never posted anything since then (laughs) but like you know I was like so yeah maybe when the the documentary comes out I'll probably put like a little promo up on there if they uh-huh. allow it but other than that like I'm not messing with Derby Hill <laughs> like I just read <laughs> right. oh yeah it's just a lurker thing like you just look at shit and you're like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I have no balls to comment on anything or like no <laughs> no even though it's anonymous like I mean like when people send stuff, like I would still feel bad. I'd be like, Ooh, <laughs> like I wouldn't have the balls to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been very intimidating, but yeah, I, I'm glad that I, I got just past that fear because I've gotten to speak with some amazing skaters, passionate skaters and whatnot. Well, and the thing is like 90% of the skaters that I've met have been amazing. I've only yeah. met a handful of douchebags yeah. you know but like most everybody is really awesome and super accepting and just amazing so it's that's also the nice thing I think that's also what keeps people coming back mm-hmm. is that you know that if I go to this event or I go to this thing there's going to be people like me that I'm going to be able to connect with that I'm going to be able to you know interact with and we have a common interest already and maybe I can find other things and you know that's the amazing allure of roller con. <laughs> roller con. It's like you, oh wow. It was just like an ocean. I was just like eyes wide, just looking. Oh, I know. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. My first time I was like so overwhelmed. And then the next year you're like, I'm a pro. I got this. Like, <laughs> yeah. I haven't been in years, years. Like, I went in 2011. So it's probably been it's been about a decade it has been a decade and so but yeah I met Susie Hot Rod and um you know like back in my day (laughs) (laughs) the skaters out there were were, oh I um yeah and and volunteering was amazing too you got to like meet a lot of really cool people and stuff so Mm -hmm. What has been your best derby moment? Um, that's rough. Cause I feel like I have like a couple of them, but, um, well, that awesome trophy, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. So, um, so I will say when we had, um, USARS nationals, um getting to play with some of the people that I got to play with I got to play with Miss T Maven which was like amazing Aaron Go Brawl and um her boyfriend I can't remember his name but he played uh, Monster Jam he plays for the gatekeepers and like playing, playing with like those high level people I was like holy crap I'm actually sharing a track with these people like this is amazing and um just getting to play with those people was really like a highlight. And then playing against people like Steven Carter, um, Rolamite, and playing against Sweet Feet and playing against, um, oh, who else was there? I mean, like, there was just like so many high level people and I'm like, how am I here? <laughs> like me, I'm a nobody. How the hell am I playing against these people? And then getting silver in the whole tournament felt amazing. So that was probably a derby high. And then it was you know, like three days being there, being like completely immersed and like just getting to meet all these people. And um, some of the juniors that were there were like absolutely amazing. And getting to do that was just, it was awesome. I bet, I can imagine. I can like totally feel like what you, you know, what you were saying, like, as you were saying, you're like, I, you know, like how, how do I get to skate with these? Yes. Skaters, that's beautiful. Yeah. Even in Spain, um, that was probably another highlight. So granted, I wasn't playing, but being immersed in Derby, seeing Derby being brought from these other countries, like the Women's League, they had an India team. um, And all those girls were like 16 playing in a world tournament. (laughs) Um, And then like Team Australia. And then, of course, like the U.S. gals and um, the they had 
China and Japan from the men's side and like just seeing all of these different countries being represented and playing roller derby together was crazy. Like we don't speak the same language, but we all play this game. That was, it was just powerful. Yeah. It was so-, so you do speak the same language because you play this game. And, yeah. and, and it's just, it extent, you're just like, yes, this, love it. <laughs> no, yeah. Like it. So that was another really cool thing. And then like just being in Spain was awesome. But <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. There's a, there's a few interviews on here if you want to watch them of some international players. And I have Australia on here. So that's pretty dope. That's awesome. So. In your experience with roller derby, what did you find? I think I found who I wanted to be because I think that came out. Um, Like we were talking about, like having this alter ego that you get to make everything about, you know, and finding out, hey, I really like this. Why am I more, why am I not more like this? Or, you know, things like that. Um. And so how are you coping with, uh, like, the pandemic and the break in roller derby? It's been really rough. Um, I know I went through a depression, um, not, you know, being physically active like that um, took a toll. I, you know, lost muscle. I ate, like, garbage. Um, However, I did start finding, like, other things that I used to love. Um, so I've never really played sports before besides roller derby. And I used to play music all the time. So I've played violin for about 20 something years. So I just joined an orchestra again and I'm in talking to another um, teacher at work and I might be joining their like marching band thing and like kind of finding that side of myself again, um, has been filling this void for right now, but Hopefully things are picking back up. I don't want to quit the things that I've picked up, but um, it'll definitely be an adjustment to go back to that thing that I love. So. And do you have any words of encouragement for the skaters who are watching right now and maybe going through the same thing? You put what you, what you put in is what you're going to get out. If you want to become a better skater, you have to try. If you want to make friends, you have to try. It's just not going to come naturally to you. You have to, whatever you put in, you're going to get out of it. So you really, if, if you want to be the best skater that you can be, you can't just show up to practice once a week. You have to put in everything that you want to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And derby is rough. It will chew you up and spit you out some days, but then other days it loves you and you love it back. So it's just kind of, yeah, what you put in is what you get out. Absolutely. And you can apply that to anything, you know? Yeah. Definitely. Well, Val Raven, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the show. Very much loved talking with you. I also appreciate all the viewers and I hope to see you guys again soon next time. And that's all for now. (laughs) Over and out.